Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Wisteria here. So this Shropshire folk tale, Shropshire, people pronounce it differently, is called Major's Leap. A Major's Leap on Wenlock Edge commands a panoramic view of Shropshire towards Cheshire and Wales. There is a very steep drop. During the Civil War, Shrewsbury, Bridgenorth and Ludlow were all royalist strongholds. One of the King's most loyal supporters, Major Thomas, and it does say that his last name, if I can find it, Smallman, he lived on Wenlock Edge, so it says Major Thomas Smallman lived on Wenlock Edge at Wilderhook Mansion, um, I'm sure you can research that as well guys. Although many were loyal to the King, the parliamentary forces were gathering ranks. While Major Smallman was away discussing tactics at Bridge North, Wilderhope was sacked by Cromwellian supporters. The mayor arrived home to find the doors open, his pewter, silver and everything of value taken, all else discarded and broken. He stayed only long enough to saddle fresh horses for himself and his small band of followers and to hear in which direction the looters had gone. They caught up with the Roundheads near Ludlow. Before the Roundheads knew what was happening, the Royalists were among them. Although Major Smallman was outnumbered by nearly ten to one, the looters never stood a chance. When the slaughter was done, he reclaimed his belongings and rode home, leaving the bodies where they had fallen. Word spread amongst both sides. Already well respected by the king's supporters, the tale, growing in each retelling, made Major Solomon, Smallman a hero. The parliamentarians heard of a cold-blooded killer, a man who treated the dead with contempt, a figurehead to be destroyed. They wanted revenge. Major Smallman was watched closely. The Roundhead's opportunity came when Major Smallman was riding secretly from Bridge North to Shrewsbury, with plans for a large-scale attack tucked inside his shirt. Cromwell's men set up an ambush. Major Smallman was surrounded, and this time he was overpowered. Trussed up like a Christmas goose, they tied him onto his horse, laughing and celebrating. The Roundheads led him back to his own manor and imprisoned him in his own room. But they did not discover the hidden plans. The Roundheads made themselves comfortable downstairs, ordering the frightened servants to bring out the finest food Smallman's larder and cellar could provide. In his room, Major Smallman could hear them laughing and feasting as they discussed what to do with him. Some were for executing him immediately, hanging him outside his own manor. Others had something more public in mind. The mayor should stand trial for his crimes and be publicly put to death where the royalist supporters could see his humiliation. The major was locked up behind an oak door, a sentry standing guard. What his captors didn't know was there was another way out of major's room, a hidden passage from the fireplace, a spiral staircase down to the kitchen, winding between the chimney and the outside wall. The major crept down the stairs and, peering into the kitchen, waited for his moment. While some of the servants were distracted, and they did distract the guard too. And this is when he made his bustle from the kitchen to outside. The major ducked down beneath the windows and headed to the stables at the back of the manor. The first inkling of his escape came with a sound of hooves, then a fleeting glimpse of a horse and a rider 
racing past the window. The roundheads raised the alarm, unlocking the Major's room to find it empty. Major Smallman had a start on his pursuers, and he knew the edge better than anyone. He raced out across the fields, through East Oak Woods, following the rise of the edge. But the roundheads were soon close behind him and gaining. Whilst his horse was tiring, he twisted and turned through the trees, ducking below low branches, hoping to unseat the enemies on his heels. But while he tried to shake them off the pursuit, others rode ahead to outflank him. Determined to keep the plan secret, and faced with public trial and hanging, the Major decided instead to die like a hero. He turned his horse head and rode straight for the edge. The trees thinned, and he had one glimpse of the Shropshire plan laid out before him. He dug his spurs into his horse's flanks, and the animal bunched its muscles and stretched out into a great leap over the cliff. For a moment, they hung there suspended in the air. Then the horse and rider fell, flailing downward. The horses behind swerved and reared to avoid following them. Peering over the edge, the roundheads saw the broken body of the horse far below. There was no way that Major Smallman could survive that. So slowly, they turned and headed back home. But, miraculously, the Major survived, caught in the branches of a crabapple tree. His fall was broken. He held still, not believing his luck and barely breathing, until he heard the soldiers leave, and then cautiously clambered down the tree and the edge. Much later, a bruised and battered figure limped up to Shrewsbury Garrison. Triumphantly, Major Smallman handed over the plans and his story. The garrison sprang into action, and a force was dispatched. Major Smallman among them, to Wilderhope. The roundheads cowered at Major Smallman when he burst in, a ghost on horseback. Revenge and triumph ran like fire through the Major's veins. The battle was over almost instantly. The roundheads, unprepared and too surprised to defend themselves. When all was secured, the Major crumpled like a rag doll. But there was a fierce smile on his face, and he was lord of his own manner once more. The end. I like that. Very interesting indeed. So he got what he wanted before he died. Thank you for listening. Please hit that like button, share, and if you've not yet subscribed, please do so. It really helps. Thank you for listening.